go. Okay. I've no idea what all the footage will come out like, but we'll soon find out. Yeah. And with that, it's like the camera's heard me. The answer to that question is simply, there is no footage. Of the three cameras you can see here, this one had a memory card failure, and this one decided to just, well, not record anything, which was a really nice surprise after a whole day out filming. So, how can we tell Dave's automotive tales? Well, maybe over a cheeky race. And no, I've not gone all fast and furious on you. I mean Mario Kart, of course. Okay. So, let's... So this is where you can now choose what you want, the wheels and everything. I think they did get some Mercedes F1 sponsorship in here. Um... <laughs> you GLA. That's ridiculous. Changed that bit since you last played it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're supposed to be talking about a car and I can't be really concentrating. I'm too busy, <laughs> too busy trying to turn this car around a Mario Kart. It's cool, Dave. So, let's talk about your car history. Yeah. But where did it all start? Um, so, my car history starts with um, my BMW 316 Ti Compact, which was on the E46 chassis. So, just a little bit different to the E36, where it was mainly the front of the car that changed, and um, had more like the bubble headlights as opposed to the oh, rectangular yeah. aspect, um, and the bonnet was actually a part of the kidney grille as well. Um, so, I had that for about a year or so. Yeah. And then ended up putting it through a scrappage deal to get a um, Ford Fiesta ST180. Nice. Um, so that was the 1.6 litre EcoBoost engine, um, 180 horsepower, which was great fun to have. Um, used that as a daily driver, but also surprisingly economical at the same time due to that EcoBoost engine. Um, but yes, after that, it then had a bit of a change around due to circumstances of work, so I then had to swap that in and end up buying a Volvo S40, which had the five-cylinder 2.5 litre engine. Nice. Um, naturally aspirated, so no turbo, like a T5, sadly. Um, it did sound good though, wasn't it? Yeah, it sounded good. Definitely did sound good. You definitely had the extra poke to get onto the carriageway and overtake everybody that you needed to beat. Um, and definitely wasn't on the economical side of things, but it was still a good car just for the next few months. But then after a few months, it started developing quite a lot of faults. So like the VVT solenoid went in the engine. So I was pulling onto a carriageway, it flagged up, car went into limp mode, and I've already joined onto the motorway. And I'm going about 40 miles an hour. Yeah, that's no fun. Yeah, definitely no fun. So. Um, Got that fixed very quickly. Uh, the place over in Farnborough did that for me, who were a Volvo specialists. Um, they overnighted the part from Sweden, and I got it back on the road in about 24 hours, um, which was very great good. because the next day I had a big conference to go to. <laughs> um, I guess it's a, a bit of kind of bangonomics, isn't it? You buy a cheap car, which is great to, to yeah, run. Yeah. You know, if you you know you spend thousand pounds on a car and you you know you just put fuel in it and put insurance on it, but. It's when you have to start throwing money at it to keep it running that it becomes a problem. Yeah, that, that, that's when the economics of is it really worth keeping or is it worth shopping? So, yes, I shopped that and I got a uh, Volkswagen Sirocco, um, which was 13 plate with a 2 litre TDI engine. So that's the modern Mark III. Yes, yes yeah. And yeah, Mark that, III. that had the. Um, automatic DSG gearbox which was so smooth and it was absolutely brilliant in terms of fuel economy. Um, that was one that I had for about a year and to be honest I wasn't actually looking to change it um, but I then just happened to be going past a BMW dealership over in Farnborough and um, just saw this bright orange M140 on the forecourt and just thought you know what I got a test drive it. So yeah, went ahead, test drove it, and then next thing you know, I ended up actually getting it. Uh, just on the day of lockdown as well. Oh, so How annoying. Yeah, um, haven't really had the opportunity to sort of give it a proper blast and enjoy it to the fullest extent as yet. Um, but yeah, when I finally get some time to open the taps and get it on the road, I'll be, uh, 
keen to experience everything that it can give me. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, talking and playing Mario Kart is a lot harder than I thought it could be. It is, um, but you, you came second in the last race and now you're winning this one at the moment, so... Oh no, but I just hit a banana. Oh, disaster. Uh, past you. So I did the oh, uh, crash the Maldonado kick on you then. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough speed. <laughs> I'm going to die. Oh no, just... So, the the BM you bought, the M140, so it's, a, it's an F20, isn't it? Yes. For the purposes of the people watching, all three of them, um, Tell us a bit about the M140. So the M140 has got what's known as the B58 engine in. So it's an inline straight six, um, nice. turbocharged, so it gives out 335 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque. So it's enough to wow. sort of throw you no in the back of the machine. Then. No, definitely no slouch. <laughs> I'm sort of umming and ahhing about that and the M240i, but uh, the practicality of the M140 just sort of appealed to me that little bit more. Yeah. Um, as a daily driver, the I think the M240 is definitely more designed as sort of like a, um, a baby M track car, whereas this is like a baby M everyday runner. So your plan is actually to commute in the F20? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, up and down the M25 and the A3 every day to get to work. So um, yeah, and the next few weeks commuting into central London with it. Um, so it, it's definitely going to be an uh, interesting run for sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we went out for a spin in it yesterday. Um, it seems to strike a nice balance. Wow, you, you finish already. <laughs> uh, it strikes a nice balance between kind of sportiness, but actually it's it's not a harsh, that harsh a ride. No, so it has got the M Sport suspension, which is in, in adaptive mode, so actually change between sport, comfort and eco, if that changes with it at the same time too. Um, the automatic gearbox is definitely no slouch, gives you the power when you need it and then um, it knows when to downshift to give you those extra revs so that you can pull away easier. Um, but yeah, in, in eco mode, um, I did do a drive on the motorway uh, to Woolwich a few weeks ago and I got a rather impressive 44 MPG out of it. 44? Out of That's a ridiculous, out of a... 3 litre straight oh, 6 engine, gosh. yeah. Um, so what, what colour is the F20? We've said it's orange, but there's two, so there's Sunburst and there's Valencia orange, I think? Yes, so this is the uh, Valencia orange paintwork. Um, okay. So again, it just has that little bit something different, especially when the sunlight hits it. It's definitely got a kind of uh, speckle, or sparkle to it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, um, like the, the Ford Fiesta ST, that was molten orange, and yeah, it was orange, but it did look more so red at the same time. Yeah, okay. But this one is a definitively orange car, not like Lamborghini orange, but still orange enough to stand out. <laughs> I'm back to concentrating again. <laughs> so, as you've not really had a chance to probably use it, thanks to lockdown, as that's all starting to lift, what's your plan? What's going to be your first road trip with the F20? Uh, we want to do the um, Scottish 500. Ah, the Northwest 500. Yeah. Very good. Oh, we've gone off the track. You have right, I'm just going to drop. Yeah, that's a bit like Grosjean, really. <laughs> Sorry, Grosjean. Crashed Maldonado, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. I, I very nearly just crashed into as well, ironically. So, a, f a few years ago when I had the S40, I um, did do a tour with the Brecon Beacons. Oh, very nice. Um, and I'm eager to do that again, but just in a bit more of a sportier car. Um, where I can probably test it on the corners and enjoy it to the fullest extent, so. Yeah, we'll do a run from uh, Cardiff up towards Conwy and uh, enjoy everything that both our cars can handle. Nice, there's some lovely roads there. Yeah, definitely. And certainly, in North Wales is an area I love driving. Down around uh, Snowdonia, oh, I just got lightning bolted, whatever you call it. <laughs> Shrunk down. Uh, that's why I'm going to down slow. Come on. Oh, I think that might be you in front. Oh, no, I've been hit by something. Yeah, we go. <laughs> Back to full strength. Oh no. A oh, blue turtle coming around. I think it's coming towards you. Uh, no. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh. oh did you, is that you? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Come <laughs> on, oh, come on. Second. <laughs> That'll do. I'll take second. Happy oh, days. That yeah. was a bit of Norris driving there. Yeah. Is that why you chose McLaren Orange? Yeah, absolutely. So go on Dave, so tell me what's your what's your car nirvana? Uh, car nirvana, that would probably be just for the sheer audacity and how bonkers it was, uh, the Pagani Zonda F. 
Okay. Um, I just remember as a kid seeing Hammond, Clarks, and May. I think they all had a turn driving it on Top Gear, and every single time, I just always felt in love with that aspect of this is what a bonkers car should be like. Like a Lamborghini was starting to look tame in comparison to the Zonda. Okay, so the Pagani Zonda F is your car nirvana. What's your what's your car hell? What's your car purgatory? Car yeah, purgatory. purgatory. If I had to have it as a daily driver, car hell would be a Reliant Robin because I would probably <laughs> roll it by the time I get to the bottom of my road because there's a big turning circle at the bottom of my road. Yeah, it's quite steep out there. Actually, yeah, quite steep. So it would probably be a bit like that episode of Jeremy Clarkson trying to drive a Reliant Robin. Um, so that would, oh, I've gone, never mind. You just, you've just gone into rally mode, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> got good aero on this. Just keeps me stuck to the road and I'm back. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, do please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. You can also now follow us on all the usual social media things. Um, I think, John, you actually won that overall. Get in! Uh, it's the first computer game I've played in about a decade. Oh, no, I beat you. No, no, no. what? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs>